Hi. Bam. Yo. What up? How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, how yes. you feeling? How you holding I am up? good. I see some good. folks are joining in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Morgan. Hey, Branson. Hey, Jules. Central High is in the building. I was about to say, Central High is doing. <laughs> hey, Arnie. See y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> yeah. So, welcome everyone to our first neighborhood chat. I figured, um, listen, it's we're all at home. Uh, right. You know, Philly is a town of music, so it just there's this weird feeling that just that's just around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you know we can't really consume music, but the great thing is there's folks like you who are producing music and um, yeah. remaining creative, which I feel we have to be during these really, 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 really strange times. So so thank you for being our first person. Oh, well, you know, thanks for having me. You know, known each other for over a decade plus now. So, you know. Which is crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Remember you used to yeah. play that game 13? Does anybody even remember how to play that? I don't remember. <laughs> no, I don't remember that one. Yeah, and that yeah, was... Really and that was when you had that big ass afro, even, even <laughs> in high school. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit. It was. It graduated by the time I was in my. Uh, by the time I turned like twenty twenty one, that thing was a, uh, was a lot. <laughs> but yeah, it was back in the day. But to your point, as far as like, uh, you know, producing music and then just even, um, how people are receiving music, it's really, uh, it's a it's a tough bid to kind of realize that people can't uh share in this safe spaces in the same way mm -hmm. um and uh it's just really uh it's it's really amazing to see specifically how people are galvanizing around the dj community mm -hmm. and uh getting involved with um listening to the live mixes and commenting and donating uh you know it's uh it's uh really become uh, a point of normalcy for a lot of people you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. yeah so so how have you been like during these last few weeks it's you know it's a it's a day day by day type of thing mm -hmm. um i've really been enjoying uh my weekly laws layer radio sets every mm -hmm. thursday at 8 p.m that's been amazing just because um it's helping me kind of uh almost even recontextualize myself outside of the club because for the longest time, you know, I've been predominantly a club DJ. You hear me when, when you come out. I don't necessarily put out mixes all the time, but every mix gets recorded, gets uh, put uploaded to my Mixcloud page, which you can find the link in my bio. And uh, it's just me showcasing an array of all different types of music that, you know, some of it is dance floor friendly. Uh, actually, a good amount of it is dance floor friendly, but, you know, if you're uh, in the club at like midnight, you know, it, it might not be the midnight banger, but if you're in your house at 8.30, mm -hmm. it's perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. And then that, the replay value is from there because it's like how many times, you know, you listen, how many times can you listen back to a record uh, or like, you know, like a song on a DJ mix or something that like, just it just is dated just because you know it didn't really have that lasting power yeah and um uh or even if it didn't it was just so popular that like you heard it all the time mm -hmm. so like what happens when you're when a dj approaches it more like okay as a radio show and like as a mix show approaches it where i'm like not only introducing people to music they might not know but even playing those things that are timeless that i consider timeless Mm -hmm. you know so that's like been really really important yeah how is it how is the balance between you know being a club dj and being a producer like how do you find the balance between the two i mean taking production seriously is relatively new for me so mm -hmm. i think i almost 
like I I'm, I joined the party a little bit later, uh, but because it's so, I think I think the best way to describe it is I'm a DJ first, producer second. Mm -hmm. So I'm always thinking about how how something would work in a club, how something would work in um, in another DJ's mix, like in another set or something like that. Um, I think all that's really important to think about. But what I've also been trying to do is break away from things that might simply be like a club ready format or formula mm -hmm. and focus on melody and just like something that might be something that's a singer songwriter type of space or something like that. Because really the, the demand of the club doesn't really exist for any of us right now as DJs. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is the time to experiment. And you're getting, I mean, you can hear in like, you know, sets from Cosmo Baker, sets from Rich Medina, uh, Rebel Foster, um, like uh, just uh, Sonny James, like all different types of people. That and a couple are, of those guys are in the room. I, I saw Cosmo, yeah. I saw Rebel, shout out to you guys. Yeah, yeah, big up, big up. But like, you know, there's there, you know, there's people who can like, you know, do really, really interesting things with out the demand of trying to fill a room to get, you know, X amount of people through the door so you can get paid or whatever the situation is. Now's the time to just test it out. And in this space and in this time span, you can really hone in and have your audience hone in on what you want to be known for, mm -hmm. you know, because so many, so many times it's, it's like, you know, I, you know, I, last at the end of last year, I was DJing in China and yeah. it, it was no different than, you know, so, some of the clubs were no different than the bottle service clubs you would find here. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so what's the, like, what's really the point? If you're going to be in the house playing the same stuff, like this is your time to break free. Hmm. You know what I mean? This is your time. Yeah. And I mean, you and I, we have a lot of conversations about the, the feeling night like scene. Right. And it seems like now's the now's the time for it to reset. I mean, you know, oh, you everywhere. Know, you know, right. You are everywhere. everywhere. But yeah, you know, everywhere. Philadelphia, every, there's always a bullshit uh, thing <laughs> or a, a Twitter thread that comes out about how everybody's not working together or yeah, yeah. there's not enough, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I guess, you know, after this is all over, where do you see Philadelphia's nightlife scene going? Or um, where should it go? I mean, for real, it's really up to... That's that's a hard question because I can't think about the Philadelphia nightlife scene without thinking about how the entire planet is affected. So it's yeah. not really... To hone in on Philly, I guess the only way that I could think about you know, how it might be different than other places is just the caliber of DJs that are here mm -hmm. um, might really uh, be able to, if if everybody's properly documenting, you know, the mixes that they're putting out, making sure that they're cross-platform, you know, trying to trying out Twitch, trying out uh, YouTube, trying out, uh, obviously IG Live has been the the, kind of the biggest platform for everybody because everybody's already on Instagram. So, mm -hmm. um, But, you know, spreading it a little bit, but then also recording those mixes, making sure they go up on Mixcloud, making sure they go up on SoundCloud, and then try to build whatever um, community you can around the music that you believe in because I, I think this is going to weed out um, and, you know, I'm not saying this in a negative way, like, you know, anybody who's doing you know, any any sort of mobile DJing, weddings, you know, bar and bar mitzvahs, whatever it is, you know, like, the, those, those people are, you know, would be considered like jobbers, like people who do it, like, this is their job, they have X amount of gigs, they find out whatever new records and, like, whatever records work for that environment, but they're not really, like, pushing, like, you know, pushing anything forward, and that's not what they're here to do, that's not, not what it's about, but, you know, those gigs might dry up, um, but for the people who are really about having a unique voice, um, this will be the time that if you stay steadfast and you stay consistent, that I think you'll be able to really garner an amazing following because 
everybody's in the same place. Yeah. Everyone so well, everybody is supposed to be in the same place. Everybody's supposed to be in their cribs, but we know for a fact that everybody's on Instagram. Like you see how many people are on live at the time. Like I can't remember there ever being a time where I see twelve people going live at the same time. Like I'm maneuvering, like trying to make sure that I pick a time to even go live where I'm not competing with other DJ friends, but even places like, you know, there's no way I would have went live during the, the Rizza Primo battle. Mm. Like mm. this is not like what's the point, you know? Have and you been tuning into the, the bet to all the battle? Kind of. It's funny because I saw someone tweet that like uh like it's funny to see all the hip hop heads complain about the sound uh, like <laughs> who sound on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> but like y'all love all like the rough and rugged tracks. I'm just like it's a very different um thing for me I mean it's not even like it's weird I've never uh I've never DJ with RZA uh or I've never met RZA I've DJ with Primo like one or two times open for him one or two times mm -hmm. and you know like in general even when I was younger and I wasn't around any of that like I don't really get starstruck in that way and I really do like quality yeah. so it's like it was kind of weird to hear like it was what was great about that live stream in particular was how they were bigging each other up. Yeah, that was really really great. You know, like the little John T Pain one, I, I watched a little bit. I didn't really care about like the Scott Storch, Scott Storch, and um, was it Scott Storch and Manny Fresh? Or was it? Yeah, I, as much as I love them both, yeah. Yeah, I just kind of feel like they don't even like. If you think about like the range of, of tempos and stuff that Manny's done, and like the 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 all the R and B stuff that Scotty's done, like it's not really. And shouts out to Scott Storage from Philly, original Roots Crew member. For the yeah. people who don't know, um, but I don't know, man. It's just like all, I think it's it's great to pay homage. Um, it's great for everybody to tune in and like kind of for you know people who forgot, you know this you know listening to uh any of like the rizza beats or any like any of that stuff hearing them play it is cool i get it and it's also on a very democratic platform like instagram so then it means it's like it touches people even more yeah um but uh yeah i don't know i'm just kind of like not so much I, it's, it's weird man it's, uh, this 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 quarantine and like the social distancing stuff really put me in a totally different headspace about how to approach it's almost like like an internal renaissance in a way because i'm not mm -hmm. really worried about the same hey what up marquise i'm not really worried about like the same things like mm -hmm. i'm really not worried about the same things i think there was because there's as a as someone who like djs and clubs you know i don't want to dj for an empty room and certain yeah. times you know you have to worry about like okay if x amount of people come, don't come out or x amount of people don't stay and drink if you're getting mm -hmm. to the bar like whatever that stuff all the politics with that yeah. uh you know financial stuff with that it's really um it's really freeing to not have that be the basis for why i'm playing have that not really be part mm -hmm. of the narrative for why i'm playing music right now that's not miss, really well no, but i mean you know because friends and fam i mean what a bad night for y'all is what 200 people so like yes yeah, you know, like 200 miss, to 300 people yeah, yeah like do you do you miss the because i mean for me i as much as i love listening to music um you know solo uh I do miss, um, you know, dancing with my friends and whatnot right. as a DJ. Like, do you do you miss that live interaction? Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I definitely, I definitely think that there's, um, because I've been DJing since you know, since I was a teenager. It's it's weird because like you use the word reset and I think that's the perfect word to use Yeah. because I think that if you're doing a month, like a bunch of parties every single week, how many times can you play? Um, how many times can you even like either? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I cool. Hear you. okay yeah. cool. How many times can you play the same records before you get bored? Yeah. Let alone, let alone the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what up, lazy boy? Um, 
like and shouts out to I guess everybody call me fish still. <laughs> you know how long <laughs> how long people know me and know they'll me never seen that, for. They'll never live that damn. That's some that's some home da- hometown hero stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's really what it is. Yeah, you know, big sis Lynette, what up? Um tell Jeff I said what up. Uh what up, Morgan? Uh but yeah, it's just like um it's really, really uh, interesting to just take this time to, uh, and, and I realized it's doing Law's Lair for the first week I did it six days straight. Yeah, that was, I uh, missed, I think, five out of the six. Right, <laughs> so yeah. so all of them are still on my mixed cloud. Episode 10 is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And, and it just became something where I'm just like, there was never a point in my life where I made a different, like, because you know, I put the song like a, like a radio show. I'm gonna put the songs together mm-hmm. and pick what you know I want to play for that set. I was yeah. also at the time at the very beginning realizing that I was trying to beat the Instagram out, like algorithm because they were kind of like booting you if you were playing licensed songs. Right. So yeah. I was like, wow, this is let's take you know take this as an opportunity instead of a hindrance and be right. like, okay, this is gonna be the time that I'm gonna play stuff that like you know either nobody has i I mean i I dropped remixes that i put out on my band camp last week i I put i was dropping them on the show and also even records like now in this space and specifically with the radio show i can play songs that if we're talking about like songs i might play early at friends and fam Mm -hmm. become part like principal parts of the hour set and if you listen back to it you're hearing stuff that you would miss if you came at 11 30 11.45 11.45 when I'm already trying to get people up and dancing. So Listen, it's like... I always, I always yeah. get so mad because you play all my favorite r guys <laughs> before I arrive. It's and just a... Re- always, yeah. No, go ahead. Because then you all, then you always text me, you should have got there earlier. Like, <laughs> nigga, you know I need to make an appearance in a you... <laughs> midnight. <laughs> I mean, you always got the fits. So it's like... Let that's you know. <laughs> but that's the hardest. That's like one of the hardest things to deal with. And actually... That's actually a Philly nightlife thing that I wish wouldn't be so standard. And it's funny because, like, not to make the Philly New York comparison, but there's a real, there's rest in peace of Rondé Gibson, uh, you know, like OG of, you know, Fluid Nightclub, the, the, the gatekeeper of the space, and just like the heart and soul of, of that club while it was open. Yeah. He said that the difference for him. He felt this way, and I've experienced this too. Um, but the difference between Philly and New York is that people in Philly always go, "Hey, uh, like walk into the room and say where the party at," and people in New York walk into the room and say, "I'm here. The party can start now." Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. environment that might be just because of proximity. If you're coming from Queens and you're going all the way like down to like midtown or something like that that's the dedicated you're dedicating your time to go to that space yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's it's it might just be something with that but i really wish that would change in philly because even if you you know you leave early and go to another place like you're missing some of the the gems that your favorite dj could be dropping mm-hmm. just because the demand isn't the same. There's a demand to play Roddy Rich at 12.45, if not, like, earlier, depending right. on the situation. I tend to wait to play those records and get to that space. So, like, let's say party starts at 10, party's over at 2, 2.30. I, I wait to get to that space. I try to hold out till like, 12.30, 12.40, like, 12.15, 12.30, because there's so much great music to play mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be the five to ten records that people keep in their current mental rolodex yeah and that's that's what i think this quarantine has really um helped different djs cultivate is um especially like uh veteran cats or like just people who you know like just don't um they don't get to play those like I won't don't get to play those records. You can play whatever you want, but mm-hmm. if you're trying to be someone that works with the room and doesn't work against it, you're going to have to make those compromises because it's a comp- conversation, you know. 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, to your point, like, I hope it, as far as Philly nightlife, I hope that the Philadelphia music community at large is tuning in to all the DJs, all the musicians that are that are rocking on their lives, supporting, doing whatever they can to support, and hopefully will um, hopefully will uh, bring that same energy and remember the things that they played during those sets during quarantine and be like, oh man, like I can't wait to hear when he or she or whoever plays this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to ride as hell with that. No one wants to I'm... party anymore. She's damn sure right. Yeah, Not I mean, it's <laughs> because, because yo, it takes a certain uh, certain sense of community and also a sense, a, a lack of uh, of individualism to want to be part of like a, a like a group like a like a group and all like cuz cuz so many times people don't want to be the party but they also want to tell you what to play mm-hmm. you know like so it's like you don't want to be the party but you're insisting that if you if you make this request then that means that the party is going to go up it's like the party i've had so many situations where like people are just looking at me and like the entire room is going off and they're the one that isn't happy and they think it's my fault. Yeah. And it's like, yo, you got a choice to make too. You know, Cause like, it's like the radio songs and it's like, come on. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I, I, there's plenty of radio stuff that like, you know, I just, uh, you know, uh, I, I really like some, some stuff that like has come out recently. Like I really like the Don Tolliver album. Like that, that really hit for me. Cause I just really liked the idea of, like a young thug that can hold a note <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like that kind of styles like kind of how i've been appro- approaching it yeah like you know rebel <laughs> said entitlement and stuff um trying to see what some of these comments are it's pretty cool. yeah so i mean and also we want to encourage it i mean this is a neighborhood chat if y'all have questions yeah yeah drop yeah, them man. in um yeah. you know so uh, you know I always ask you, um, you know, what you're listening to. So maybe, yeah. you know, and it's, I think a lot of people have time to, uh, you know, investigate some new folks. So right. you know, who are the people that you're listening to right now? So, yeah, I mean, I mentioned the Don Tolliver album. I've been re-listening to a lot of old house stuff and, like, just for inspiration. Mm-hmm. Going through my own records, like, you know, sampling and flipping like Willie Hutch and like all different types of stuff like that. Um, and I guess Toki Monster's album was really great to me. You would love, yo, Evan, you would love this song that Van Jess is on, on I, that album. My girls. <laughs> yo, let me tell you, girls. let me tell you that I, I know you, bro. Like yeah. that is going to be your, it's, it's pure genre, like, like that, that type, you know, because you know that's their vibe. Yeah. So it's like, it's uh, no pun intended. <laughs> right, um, yeah. But yeah, I was uh, listening to Toki Monster. Um, also, I mean, I listen to all the different types of <laughs> weird stuff all the time. Um, but I've also been engaging in like trying to listen to other DJs' um, radio shows. Like I know um, Benji B, if you go on his SoundCloud, he has his whole... Um, the three-hour mix he did for Days Magazine, yeah. he did on IG Live, and um, I really enjoyed that because I'm really trying to understand how to approach a radio format in my own way. Mm-hmm. Speak to people, you know, like I'm not going to be the like, like I'm not going to be the Power 99 radio DJ. Like that's not how I would ever approach it. Yeah. But there's a way to be commanding without being loud. And I'm really just trying to learn how to how to approach that. Things like, you know, going on live with you like this and, and mm-hmm. speaking with you mm-hmm. uh, is, you know, is really helpful because I'm just, you know, I'm really trying to rediscover myself um, through this time. My partner, Simone, she's been super helpful. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we're uh, everything shout from... Out yeah, shouts out to her. You know, it, it's just... And it's and it's really really amazing during this time to even have support in that way. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like kind of a per- like I said like it's a perfect like you said reset like this is the time to reset mm-hmm. and really figure out uh, what that means for you. I'm really curious about like 
what's going on with you now that like you're like you're the main thing you were using the site for or the site you know for the ig is for mm -hmm. promoting events so what is the um what is the next step for anderson you know like <laughs> good question um yeah. i think this is a good first step um, right i mean i will be totally honest i had a full-blown like panic attack like Damn. two thursdays ago because i'm like wow my 2020 is not what i planned it out to be and everybody knows yeah. me even though i'm I'm an air sign, I'm a Libra, but I am a planner. So I try to like, you know, plan out. In fact, I had my my spring project, my summer project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be the five year anniversary of the Anderson Street. I cannot. Oh, remember. wow. Five years, really? Yeah. Since we had years. that meeting, since we had that meeting in Rittenhouse? Crazy, right? It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. So, it, and then I had some stuff planned, planning for, planned for the fall. So, yeah. Um, I think right now, um, I mean, I've always been interested in it. One guest, Tiffany, there is another plan. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I've always been interested in the creative economy. And right. One of the things I think Anderson Street will do, well, once this foolishness is over, I think, I hope we will be one of the players to help regenerate and improve the cr the creative economy even more that. so than what it is now. I hear that. I hear that, and it's really it's really important and it's admirable because you know so many people are trying to figure out how to make money during this time, and that's yeah. that's all warranted and that's obviously essential. But there's just so much room now because you like even I was thinking about like uh you know uh setting up my Twitch stream and me and Simone were talking about like what the layout would look like. Right. I'm pretty much building the the concept of like what would be a club. Like what do you what would the screen look like? What would the screens like how would you set it up to make it look um look like something that somebody could watch but also like kind of fill up the room in that way when people are listening in their homes. Um yeah man like the the in in times of need like this and times of stress like this this is when some of the most amazing creative output comes out that's true mm -hmm. you know so if you're on the forefront of uh spreading the good word when it comes to that like you're already a step above you know anybody who's still trying to do the same old because like shit ain't going back to normal no nope. it's really not <laughs> no, it's not really normal. not i've been yeah. joking around saying like uh, and I think I think Morgan was making fun of me for my my uh, <laughs> that I didn't have ear pods or something like early on in the thing. I'm like I got my whole life is wires. Like I don't want to spend money on <laughs> ear pods. But um, <laughs> but like I was liking the uh, likening uh, the first like okay to uh, go outside and like everything being okay to like the first like the new when the new iPhone comes out. And you yeah. buy it, and that shit is bugged. And none of, like, they need updates. They need all that stuff. So, like, it, even even for me, like, thinking about, like, I don't want to be the first, unless absolutely every precautionary measure is taken care of, I don't want to be the first person to throw a party mm. when when all this shit opens back up. Because, like, Bro. what is... That's, right. dang, that's super dangerous that to be like, dangerous. you know what I'm saying? Like, what is it going to look like? Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the club scene going to look like? What is the party scene going to look like? It's, right. You just don't want to be the person that pulls the trigger without covering all bases because I, yeah, I just don't think it's... For that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, care, if you care about your community, you shouldn't. You right. shouldn't, you know? Like, it should be really, like we got another what 16 months or something to a vaccine if that yeah. mm -hmm. you know and i i'd rather have a better i guess understanding of of how people are feeling so you know kind of take taking mm -hmm. time taking time to make sure that uh everybody's safe cuz yeah. i'm playing for me i'm playing music for people right now like i'm on my mixcloud page i'm getting 
to like a thousand a thousand plays right okay. on on like about a thousand plays or more on for the most part on each mix right yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm not trying to brag or nothing like that, but like I'm saying that to say that warehouse on watts doesn't even fit a thousand people right so mm-hmm. it's like the word is still getting out if you take mm-hmm. the time to do it it's not the same way but the word is still getting out so it's like you just right. you just stay diligent and you just um you just do your part and hopefully it'll translate back into the rooms when everything goes some like in some way shape or form i mean like you know me i grew up on all types of cyberpunk anime and all mm-hmm. like <laughs> so it's like i'm already seeing how that shit is be- becoming in vogue when it comes to fashion and all that stuff so i'm i'm just waiting for people to show up and looking like a like you know some sort of anime character <laughs> i mean people are already doing it but like you know it's it's hard to recognize you're living in the future while you're living in the present mm-hmm but we're living in the future. Like yeah, every absolutely. sci-fi movie starts out with some sort of like there was the pandemic and right. then this happened. You know what I mean? So it's, I mean, some of the greatest early science fiction stuff from like the, you know, the 30s and 40s and stuff like that happened after like the depression and the Spanish flu and all that stuff. This is just like, it's just how the world is going to be, you know? Right. Yeah. Sorry. You know, you, sorry about that. You know, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, I nerd out on that type of shit. Well, but I mean, it's very, very, very real. And I do want to say, um, you know, just remind people, uh, you know, if you have any questions for, right. for Matt or me, I mean, whatever. I, I, I like my, my side of the. Where'd you, where'd you, where'd questions. you get that jacket? Uh, ASOS, listen, okay. have a positive ASOS. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, you always got the flyers, the flyers stuff on. You know, I mean, I would never like, you know, but <laughs> that's that's your that's your Steve's. You got it. <laughs> you know, you, 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 as Morgan said, you know, people don't want to be the party anymore, and right. I don't really go out to be the party. I go out to have a good time, and yeah. I wear things where I can swirl and right. you know. Right, and I I wish everybody else did too. I mean, I will yeah. say, <laughs> fan in, in itself is a fashion show. Yo, uh, that's really nice to nice to hear. I, so I, I appreciate that. Out, of course. Yeah, everybody everybody does dress. I mean, since we moved to Warehouse on Watch from Kung Fu Necktie, and also shouts out to Queen Joe, our host yeah, is in the building. Yeah, our Friday guys. Yep, yep. She got um, she got a couple new songs out right now, so you should check that out on her Spotify. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, uh, now that the the party is itself, I mean, like in December we we were at capacity, so like I can't always see the yeah. fits, <laughs> you know. But I see, I see it. I I find out, and this was even the same at KFN. Like I would find out who went to the party by looking at Tim Blackwell's, like, shots fired photos afterwards. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you were there? Like, so there, were, I, there was definitely times where I didn't even know you were there until after I saw the photos. I'm so <laughs> offended. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. It's, it, especially, <laughs> yo, especially at KFN, because it was just, like, remember that time, like, that when, uh, like, all, like, Bert and Victor and all of them would stand right in front of the DJ booth, uh, and I would have to, like, part the C right. or whatever. Okay. And, like, it was just a lot, man. It was a yeah. lot. It's it's not like the super dope days like when we were at like you know even at the end when we were at fluid and I can nobody's really in the booth that I can look down at everybody mm-hmm. not look down on people but you know what I mean you know? yeah so <laughs> yes queen I, I know yes <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah um yeah go ahead one of the things that um you know my favorite part of uh, friends and fam and it seems to be a new addition to it once you got. It, to uh, Warehouse on Watts, which is the R&B hour or the R&B <laughs> at hour after two o'clock. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. No, you no. I mean, if you have anything else to say about yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, what kind of inspired that? I know, you know, it's the, that it, it, it's, in, it's in the traditional, you know, get your hook up for tonight. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Right. But like, you know, let's talk about R and B and and nightlife that very strange, very strange uh, intersection that those two worlds play. Well, I think there there's two things that I kind of noticed. Well, w- one was in the uh, influx of all the theme parties. 
R&B parties became a really, really big thing. The first R&B party that I remember uh, there being like, that was blowing up was 143, which was so super mm -hmm. Sam, still is so super Sam's party uh, in LA. Um, mm -hmm. And that was like early on, like, and you know, over time, I think they're like on their seventh year or something like that. I, I can't remember, but they've had Genuine perform at the party, like all different types of people. And then, you know, that from, from that point on, you had R&B only. You, me, and R&B, shouts out to Nas, Six Eight, and the whole squad. I think, I think Jamie's in the room. Hey, yeah, Jamie. Jamie. What up, Jamie? You know, so uh, like, I noticed that more and more people were gravitating, and specifically, you know, people that look like us were mm -hmm. gravitating towards R&B being a focus in the party. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, it's true. Like, uh, like Queen Joe will tell you, like, I've almost always ended the night with r and that it's I, the only difference was that because you remember do you remember that night at kfn it was it was friends and fam and i ended the night with drew hill's beauty and all y'all yeah. like saying and then i even got on and did all the cisco ad libs like it was it was just like that was, was a communal yourself. experience right that, that speaks to the the black tradition of of voice you know right, right. <laughs> And that's what R and B does. Right. R and B R and B is really to me is like non intrusive community music in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like one of those things where it's like you don't like yeah, everybody could sing like when whatever uh everybody sings like baby or whatever when uh ASAP Ferg work comes on and stuff like that. Right. But mm -hmm. there's really something, there's also an era of 90s, late 80s, 90s, and 2000s R&B that was just like, yeah, like Aura's in here, shouts out DJ Aura, she said R&B is so spiritual. It's like you're hitting these Absolutely. notes. Yeah. And it's literally spiritual, like rhythm and blues, inspired by gospel. You know, it, those chords, like, you know, all those people playing those records, these are people with gospel chops, like all that stuff is all in there. You know, so why not in the night if, you know, if if the point is that people are respecting each other's space, why, why at the end of the night, why play the most rah-rah, whatever, whatever to get everybody hyped? You can be really, really, um, there's a sincerity to R&B. Yeah. That, yeah. like, it's, like, if somebody... It, let's put it to you this way. <laughs> I said, preach, Fishman. <laughs> if, if somebody at the end of the night, let's say like a guy walks up to a girl during um, Anita Baker's Sweet Love and tries to like grind up on her or something like that, he'll look like a fool. Like he'll look literally like, like nobody's like, like, yes, there are like, you know, quote, bump and grind records, whatever it is. But there's these, you can, that, that same person could but where he at i want i want that listen that has never <laughs> happened to me where that at? Where that at? but like you can get that right but you can also get that same person singing along with you and then you have that shared moment and then that moment is you know not the and morgan shout out but like that is way more sincere than just like you know just people and like i'm not i'm not denying the rubs like go ahead and like do what y'all gonna do but like I think it's really, really important for people to connect with each other in the room. Not I just, agree, but you know, you yeah. Rob, to to you bring you give me joy, you bring me joy would be a top five. <laughs> would be a marriage. Hey, I mean, you know, uh, that that can always see the girls want I'm, it I'm too. Just Come, yes, our needs. The girls want that too. See, the, I, that's a whole that. Queen Joe, we'll talk about that on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> right. But right. Sorry. Yeah, I mean no, I mean I, I I'm like I said, I'm not denying my my whole thing is to create the base level. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do after that is like whatever y'all want to do, as long as it's respectful, I'm I'm in the club, I'm cool with it. Right. Oh yeah, and I do be end of the night with most Steph the panties. Like that yes. is but it's also but you know what's funny about that record is one, I'm just a most deaf fan, so it's like 
that just that's the reason I play it. But also, I've always liked the um the Tom Brock sample. Yeah. So it's like, I for me, it's like I'm not. I, I understand that it's like a sensual record or something like that. But like, I'm not really. I'm thinking about the melody <laughs> more right. than I'm thinking gotcha. about like. And I do get really excited when like I see people really enjoying each other's company. Uh, uh, Simone and myself, uh, her her friend Kadir, I remember at the end of the night, this <laughs> she's laughing right now, was like had his eyes closed while I was playing the panties and was just vibing out. Nobody was around him or nothing like that. Like it was, it was he was just enjoying it. So it's like the fact that that those melodies can give people either transcendence together or transcendence by themselves is so important. Yeah. You know? And one of the things about all the rah-rah turn-up stuff is that there's, it, do, it doesn't really give you that much of a journey if it's just right here. Like, you need peaks and valleys. And mm-hmm. I think that's the most important thing that I would advise that I would give to any DJ at any time. If all mm-hmm. the clubs were still open, it's like, where's your peaks and valleys? Yeah. That's <laughs> Queen Joe said. Hey, you still expose <laughs> Again, we're going to talk about this on Friday, but I feel <laughs> like people leave at two o'clock when, if y'all really trying to get some, y'all need to stay till two thirty, right? Because everybody's wide open by that point. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, you can do what they want, you know, do whatever you're going to do with it. It's a uh, that's something that I kind of, I do miss. And it's mm. funny, it's like, I don't even miss the most, like, turn parts. I just miss that end of the night part where, like, I'm playing all the smoothest stuff and really, like, I remember when, when I did the, uh, this past February, I think I did, like, predominantly, if not all, R&B for like the last two hours or something. Like, I can't remember. You Queen Joe would be able to tell you better because I'd be forgetting. But like I remember the moment where I played uh, like like I echoed something out and played uh, Luther, Don't You Know That? And it was just like oh. bow, 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 bow. like it was just like these line. moments. It's like those moments. Those bass lines, all those things. It's like you can't that that th- those are memories if you if you happen to be next to um the right person and the right person is next to you during that time that is a a, a whole memory mm-hmm. and shout once again like i'll shouts out to marquise who's you know i don't know if he's still in the chat but like him and th- this is a testament to i think you know how i even think about the impact that i can have as a dj is back when Super Dope was going on, Queen Joe introduced uh, my childhood friend Morgan and Marquise on the dance floor. I then DJed their wedding, right? And then recently, like maybe two summers ago or something like that, I can't remember. Um, uh, I was DJing at uh, Cherry Street Pier with or uh, down down by the waterfront or whatever with Rich Medina and their daughter ran up yeah. mm-hmm. while I was DJing playing while I was playing Stevie. Yeah I like, was come there. On. Yeah, I you were there. there. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like come on man. Like that's how let it, like you know there's so many there's so much ageism in like the music community like in the entertainment community and stuff like that. And like I just like to highlight that as like a point of where where and how I would like to grow up. Like, I would like to grow up with those type of experiences. Like, yeah. I know the people that got engaged and married that met at Friends and Fam or met at Fish Tank or met at Superdope. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. that's really, that's high praise, mm-hmm. you know, as far as the environment is concerned in the, in the community. Yeah. So. All right. Does anybody have any questions? We've been on for 45 minutes um, (laughs) because Instagram kicks us off in an hour. But, you know, we want to give some folks a chat. Speak now forever. Hold your peace. (laughs) Well, while they're they're figuring that out, what are you listening to right now? Oh, that's a good question. Well, you know, I love Brent Fias. Yeah, Um, true. Yeah, Brent, he's like 
and I say this and, and as a pun by calling him like the future of R and B. Like I think he is like <laughs> in terms of his like women hating lyrics but I don't know how to give me power it's like I don't know and then like but also his melodies are just freaking insane yeah yeah Yo, um, on Brent I really think and uh as far as Lazy Boy the Luther Luther, uh, Luther Vandross song I played was uh Don't You Know That but um the to Brent do you, you know the like a version uh thing that you like you can watch like that you ever see that thing in Childish Gambino yeah. singing Nivea mm -hmm. I really want Brent Fires to do uh, Where I Want to Be, Donnell Jones. Ooh, that would be good, yeah. Right. I mean, he is very modern-day Donnell. Right. Um, like, Tim and Bob era Donnell. Like, I, mm -hmm. I love it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I love um, Brent Fires. The Clark Sisters mm -hmm. really took me to a place. So I've probably been listening to the Clarks. To um, Gascalon? yeah. Like the Clark, like for the, for, I would say since the since the movie aired, I feel like Karen Clark Sheard needs to be up on the pedestal on on the podium with Aretha, Aretha, Mariah, and Whitney. I think she's the fourth person in that yeah. hierarchy. But we could save that discussion for another day. I didn't hear about this movie. What? There's a Clark Sisters movie? Yeah, uh, pr it was produced by. It was on Lifetime. It was produced. Oh, by okay. Uh, Missy, Queen Latifah, and Mary J. I did um, hear about that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Everything. Dope, dope. Um, so I've been listening to the Clarks. Um, Thundercats album was really good. Mm -hmm. um, Little Dragon put out their best album ever. <laughs> it's really um, good. It's really good. Ooh, we, oh, we got a couple questions. Okay, Wait, cool. So, DJ Domus. Yeah, hey, Dom. My man, Dom. Do you feel like there's less ageism with DJs than rappers and singers? Seems like more DJs in their 40s or 50s are able to still be in their prime. Yes, I totally agree. Um, I totally agree. Uh, I think when it comes to DJs, um, you don't actually get the notoriety. I mean, there's young producers who end up DJing, but like as far as any of the DJs, that we all know, nobody really gets like crazy love until they're in their thirties. Yeah. Like there's nobody that you know, like the biggest records that you get from from all the most commercial people, like someone like Diplo is all 30, he's like 41 now, I think or something like that. I don't know, it's like maybe older than that, but like all that stuff happened in his thirties. Uh, Atrax in his late thirties. Um, you know, and then you see the people who like really handle that longevity. You think about like the entire originals crew, D Nice, Rich Medina, like uh Stretch Stretch uh Stretch Armstrong. Well i Stretch is different because he was a radio DJ, so like he's always gotten love for being the ear for the golden era of hip hop. But um yeah, I mean I totally agree that like you're also like selling a DJ is selling that uh, that person's ability to play to a crowd, play play a catalog, and like have some sort of unique something. Yeah, yeah. Guys like Kenny Dope playing for ten thousand rap boys, <laughs> getting his bag. Yeah, I mean like, but Kenny Dope like a great example of someone who's just like always stayed the course and you know, grew with his music, you know, with New Eureka and Soul and all that stuff. So, yeah, I totally agree. With with artists, and especially artists that are signed to labels, and especially artists that are signed to major labels, they have to sell to whoever their target demographic is. Um, am I keeping the new cut? Why that pop up like that? You got, like, the special Q&A, John? Yeah, I have a Q&A, John. I got the, oh, uh, the damn. special host. We, I am I am keeping my hair low. That is uh that is I'm no no longer uh holding it down for the for the for the long well, hair. Well, as you say that I'm going to give a little secret. Fellas, keep the beard. People like I am gonna keep the jaw. beard. I am gonna keep the beard. Keep I, the beard I can't jaw. I can't I can't be no matter no matter where I go, no matter where I live in life, I have to rep Philly and keep my beard. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, also, uh, I want to answer, uh, and it's funny because, like, 
Queen, you know, Sierra using the question thing. Her thing popped up real big and everything like that. (laughs) So it's like, it's it's so, it fits her personality so well. So, uh, (laughs) Khalil said, damn, outing DJs ages. We're just talking about how ageism doesn't matter. It's better that they're older. (laughs) You know, it's probably like, it's a better thing. But, um, uh, like, uh, so Rebel said, what was the most spiritual moment? Uh, I had during an event. You can answer that. I'm, I'm, I've had a bunch. So it's like I, I'm trying to think of like the most spiritual moment. It's um, really, really tough. I know one when um, who was that? The guy from um, Everyday People. When Momo. He met oh, Sade. that was some yes. Shit. yes, yes. That might be. That is definitely the number one moment that has ever happened. At the end of night, end of the night for friends and fam to me yeah, is when DJ Moma played his. He made an edit of of uh, sweetest taboo, Shade sweetest taboo that went with um, over over um, uh, Fela, it was Fela, Fela yeah. what, what or no get enemy, and I was. <laughs> That was, yeah, top five feature moment, like, straight up. Like, that was, that was ridiculous. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever get over that. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, a moment where I could think of that was that crazy. It's not really, I don't know if it was necessarily spiritual, um, but this is, like, a, a this was a early friends and fan moment. Um, when we were still at Kung Fu Necktie, there was someone who was dancing on stage and kicked the power out. And uh, some people in the chat know know who that was. But um, I got everybody in the room to do the no music chant because the microphone wasn't plugged up to the sound uh, sound on stage. It was on a, another board, so I could still use the microphone. So I got everybody to go like, no music. You know I mean? So like everybody was doing it and they held it. Like they held it down. People started like a dance circle or something like that. And to the point where I was able to restart the setup and actually start cutting to everybody doing the no music chant. And the f- even crazier thing about that night, which has nothing to do with spirit, but like then I brought it in and like was able to play the record. This, it's not necessarily something spiritual, but really, really crazy was that night Virgil Abloh and Her- Heron Preston were there. Wow. Yeah, Virgil Virgil and Heron came to, came to friends and fam. Uh uh Shishi Shalita uh used to like be around them. So she brought them um after they had a DJ gig for something in Philly, so some random thing. That's but crazy. um but yeah, I mean that was that was like a pretty crazy moment. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it's 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 just been a wild ride in general, you know. Yeah. I've been having like little spiritual moments just in the room, just like you know playing these playing these records. Everybody thought somebody said something racist, and everybody all oh, racist was like, "Get him out of here!" Get me out. I yeah, that. I was there for that too. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that was but a moment. Was all drunk and shit that night. Ooh, yeah, man. I think that was the last night at. Uh, I think that was the last night at Kung Fu Necktie, possibly. Um. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's the uh, it's the trials and tribulations of these rooms, you know, like all different types of personalities and all different types of uh, you know people <laughs> coming in. And you just try to like corral everybody around some good music. So yeah, I mean, I don't want to keep because I we yeah have an hour on this yeah yeah so, it's cool. Um, First, I want, you know, I want to give you an opportunity to, you know, let people, you know, just remind people what you're working on because, you know, yeah. you've got a big night tomorrow night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tomorrow night is Laws Lair Radio, episode 10. Uh, all different types of music being played for an hour. You can tune in on IG Live. Should have the, F, the Facebook Live up as well. Um, and then I'll also be announcing, stay, you know, stay on... Uh oh, what keeps me going? I mean, for real, to like where I'm at right now, like my relationship is 
is really a huge driver for us. Like, shouts out to Simone. Like, it's been really, really great. And, like, I always the music. The music is always, like, a, a, a huge driving force. But, um, yeah, so I'll have that tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah, Laws Lair Radio tomorrow, 8 p.m. And then uh, I'll be – there's – uh, there's another announcement that I'm making on my Instagram page tomorrow. Hey. That's that's F and F related. Ooh. Um, that you will see tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Be ready for the weekend. Um, something coming before uh the baby face Teddy Riley battle. I will not compete with that. Well, <laughs> my, well, my outfit is. I gotta go in my closet and see yeah. what outfit I can pull together for that. Mm. But thank you so 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 much. Yeah. Uh, this see. was, oh, wait, what is this? Think DJ okay. did. Or do a fundraiser, open a cash. You guys playing live, got to be hurting. Um, yeah, I mean, I put my cash app in the, my, it's cash, cash, with well, the cash symbol, Matt Law. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I put it in all my live streams so people can see it. You know, if they want to donate, it's always, it's always, uh, I'm always thankful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and if you want to follow me on Twitch, it's Matthew Law FNF, um, which is where, yeah, stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank so, you, Matt, for popping into our neighborhood chat. Thank you. Uh, uh, this was our first one. Again, this was like a, a whim of an idea. So the fact that some folks, yeah. you know, tuned in was really heartwarming. We'll yeah. be doing this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 p.m. Next is the queen of the nightlife scene, <laughs> uh, Queen Joe. Yeah. She's always got a, a good story to tell. So that's going to be ju- very good and juicy. I got my, I, I'm going to, I need to go get a bottle of wine for that one. <laughs> uh, so um, thanks guys. And thanks for tuning in y'all. And yo, Evan, thanks so much, man. It's always good talking to you. Of course, same here. Yeah. Peace out everybody. Peace y'all.